Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Doug Berg. I'm the PJLA testing program manager, and I'll be uh, providing an overview of the ISO IEC 17043-23 uh, version uh, for proficiency testing provider requirements, and we're going to talk about uh, proficiency testing provider assessments a bit. I'm missing my control point. Ah, there we go. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be re reviewing the standards uh, requirements for proficiency test providers. At the very end, we'll talk about uh, implementation schedule for the latest version, which is the uh, 2023 version, supplanting uh, an earlier 2017 version. And we're going to be looking for an op uh, opportunity, just give you an opportunity to ask questions um, at the end. Which you you can ask questions uh, by using the uh, 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 forward them as messages, and they will go into a, a pot, and we will pull those out at the at the end and go through them. Uh, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, all PJLA webinar recordings and slides are available for download from past webinars, and this will be one, another one that will be that will be available, and uh, they're on in a section of our, on our website uh, as listed in the URL there. Uh, all attendees are mute, mute, muted, however, feel free to, free to use the question tab, and we will answer the questions at the end of the session. So uh, uh, the, uh, this is uh, just introducing uh, the, the president of, P a lot of people talk to the president of uh, P PJLA and never actually see her. Uh, so she, this is a, pic a picture of uh, Tracy Sarazen. And uh, I'm your presenter. I'm the guy with the glasses in the lower left. And I've been around for a while in terms of testing, calibration, lab operations, engineering, and management. I worked at the uh, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, worked for a long time with General Motors. And since retiring, I've worked with accrediting organizations as an assessor and a program manager. I've been on uh, the board of uh, uh, Another accrediting body for uh, for served quite uh, quite a few years uh, in the uh, operation uh, overviewing the, the the company and its operations. As the program manager, I'm responsible for programs and testing, environmental field sampling, reference materials, and proficiency testing. And I'm also a peer evaluator uh, in the Asia Pacific Accreditation Cooperation, where we we get. Uh, uh, where, where we evaluate each other, and I do that both for for testing, calibration, and uh, PT, and uh, RMP. So this will pr provide a, an overview of uh, the revised standard as a basis of accreditation of testing providers or proficiency testing providers. And this will emphasize the various. Uh, uh, aspects of I'm having an obstruction on my screen here a minute. Excuse me. There we go. Uh, and we'll emphasize uh, critical components of proficiency testing schemes. We're going to get into terminology. They, the term is uh, some people would say programs, or some would say uh, offerings. The, the term of art in proficiency testing is schemes. And that'll be such as personnel, equipment and accommodations, uh, scheme design, execution, operation, data analysis, and evaluation, reporting, and communication with participants. We're going to touch on those topics. We're not going to go in depth on it. Uh, this webinar is an uh, is will be a, an educational opportunity for currently accredited pro proficiency testing providers, those seeking this accreditation, or laboratories. Uh, interested in what proficiency testing providers are required to have in place to meet their requirements. Ah, there, we go. there are some, uh, one of the things is uh, none of these documents uh, stand entirely by themselves. So there's a, a variety of things that you, to get a, a good grasp on. Uh, 
uh, understanding proficiency testing schemes and, or excuse, excuse me, proficiency testing providers and their accreditation um, are some other documents. Uh, ILAC P9 uh, 2014 uh, is a policy for participation and proficiency testing that sets out the policy for accreditation bodies such as PJLA on the use of a, a proficiency testing activities in the accreditation process. Uh, ISO IEC 17000 2004 uh, is a conf uh, on conformity assessment. It provides a, a vocab uh, def terms and definitions, it's vo a vocabulary and general principles. So it gives the general terms and definitions relating to conformity assessment, including the accreditation of conformity assessment bodies, such as laboratories, such as calibrators, such as PT providers, such as reference material producers and how to use conformity assessment to facilitate trade. We, uh, just as we have uh, PGLA, as we have various programs and we have various documents that define what those programs are supposed to cover and the requirements for them, we ourselves have a document that tells how we should be operating and it provides the basis of, of, uh, for accreditation so that all uh, PT, uh, excuse me, accreditation bodies uh, can understand and and and, uh, and accept each other's accreditation. And that document is ISO IEC 17011, 2017. It's the requirements for accreditation bodies, accrediting conformity assessment bodies. So this is a, a document that gives the requirements for accreditation bodies in in uh, their operations in a, in the, the context of the document these activities are those things that would be considered conform, uh, conformity assessment uh, activities and so that's things such as testing calibration inspection certification of management systems persons products processes and services and as highlighted the provision of proficiency testing so the actual uh, and the production of reference materials so uh, these uh, that's the the governing document that uh, PGLA is, is evaluated to. Uh, ISO 17, IEC 17000, 2004 conformity assessment, that's the vocabulary and general principles uh, document to, so that when we, we use terms of, uh, in certain phrases and terms, that we have a clear understanding of what those actually are. So we're going to take a look at some of the things that come out of uh, uh, 17,011 and some of the other documents so we have an, a, an understanding when we use a term, what that actually means. So in the context of, the, of, of these documents, when the term, for example, accreditation, that's a third party attestation uh, related to conformity assessment bo bodies conveying formal demonstration of their competence to carry out specific conformity assessment tasks. Now, an accreditation body, that's us, uh, we're viewed as uh, defined as an authoritative body that performs accreditation. And a conformity uh, assessment body is a body that performs conformity assessment activities and that can be the object of accreditation. So again, that could be testing, calibration, um, uh, inspection, reference material production, um, PT providers and so forth. So, uh, and all of those are uh, uh, terms that uh, you need to have a, a good fundamental understanding when you're reading as to who's doing what to whom or who, what means what to whom and so forth. A conformity assessment activity is an activity conducted by a conformity assessment body when assessing conformity. Now, that sounds like that sounds like a definitely a, a uh, a, 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 I think they call those a, a wrapped around uh, statement, so to speak. But again, uh, what it's looking at is a conform as a, the conformity assessment activity that we're concerned with here is highlighted uh, in the bottom. Bottom uh, is the provision of proficiency testing, um, and uh, the activity is uh, uh, those bodies, or excuse me, that's the activity, and the bodies are those proficiency test providers. Like I said. Uh, those types of things that are conformity assessment are are but not limited to so that's a key phrase 
testing, calibration, inspection, certification of management systems, persons, provision of proficiency testing, production of reference materials, and so forth. So now there, um, as, as folks who are somewhat familiar with uh, proficiency testing or other type of interlaboratory comparisons um, activities, and we'll talk about that later, uh, you know that there are a lot of cases, there's some statistics involved. So the the ISO uh, 13528 uh, 20, 2022 that was just recently updated at the end of the year uh, was a 2015-2016 document uh, that provides the detailed description of statistical methods for proficiency testing providers to use uh, in terms of designing proficiency testing schemes and how to analyze the data obtained by those schemes and that this document provides recommendations on the interpretation of data uh, by participants such, uh, in such schemes such and accrediting bodies when we review PT uh, that's presented, say, by a testing organization or a calibration organization. Now, the thing there is these, these procedures in this, this document can be applied. Okay, so it's, it's not a it's not that the operative word is can. There's certain types of schemes that would have evaluation procedures that might be different and so these are uh, uh, people get used to seeing certain types of a lot of statistical analyses and graphical analyses and things of that nature and that's fine but there are perhaps some other ways that get uh, that uh, pt results can be uh, evaluated and communicated to the participants and so uh, as to what uh, uh, you know, what the basis for acceptable performance is. Again, the, the procedures in that document can also be applied for the assessment of expert opinion, where opinions or judgments are reported for in, in, in the, in, in the, as a result of the study and can be compared objectively with independent reference, reference values or consensus statistics. So there are some uh, PT schemes that again don't necessarily uh, uh, end up in numerical type uh, uh, analyses or something of that nature where there's statistics can be applied to them um, but are more e uh, evaluative people might say, use the term subjective but uh, they can be re uh, the results reviewed uh, through experts uh, through uh, consensus uh, 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 observation of what a particular uh, uh, PT artifact or something like that or image or whatnot would it would have. Now why why does this uh, why do we kind of get interested in, in PT providers and PT provider accreditation? Well uh, the ISO IEC 170025 2017, the general requirements for competence of testing and calibration laboratories, says that there is a requirement that the laboratory shall monitor performance by comparison results with other laboratories where available and appropriate. And that's this monitoring should be planned and reviewed and shall include but is not limited to either or both of the following. So, for example, it says participation in proficiency testing. And it notes it the note references ISO IEC 17043 contains additional information on proficiency tests and proficiency testing providers that meets the requirements of ISO and, per, and testing providers that meet the requirements of ISO IEC 17043 and that they are considered to be competent. Um, then there are participation in interlaboratory comparisons other than formal per, proficiency testing. So what are those in some cases? Well, some of sometimes they're just uh, interlaboratory comparisons. So that's uh, those are the, the design, performance, and evaluation of measurements or tests on the same or similar items by two or more laboratories in accordance with predetermined conditions. So that could be pairwise, could be a small number of of uh, 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 call them we could call them labs, we could call them calibrators, we could call them reference material producers, and uh, it could be one or two, you know, kind of a comparison of results. Does it have to be statistical? No, not necessarily. 
things of that nature. So it says the laboratories is used to do document and cover all organizations that provide information based on experimental observation, including measurement, testing, calibration, examination, sa uh, sampling, and inspection. And the term measurement or test is used throughout this document to any activities undertaken by proficiency testing participants that's, that are subject to proficiency testing, where they're quantitative, could be qualitative, could be interpretive, unless otherwise qualified. So a third note on interlaboratory comparisons. Interlaboratory comparisons that involve measurements can make, convey more insight regarding performance when measurement uncertainty is considered. So that's just, they throw that in there as a note. Um, In the ISO IEC 170043 2013, 20, excuse me, 2020, excuse me, 2023, um, I'm kind of looking through my bifocals here, man. Um, there are some definitions as well. Um, a proficiency testing scheme is proficiency testing designed and operated in one or more proficiency testing rounds. So it could be a single round, it could be an ongoing program or a specified area of measurement, testing, calibration, examination, sampling, or inspection. And that note here is that a proficiency testing scheme can cover a particular type of activity or a number of activity types within the same area. A good example of the kind of like to keep in mind, is for those who might be familiar with ASTM, uh, interlaboratory comparisons, um, that, uh, per, you know, large numbers of uh, folks, whether they're metals uh, and the metals, we're talking metals analysis or petroleum product analyses and so forth, they offer these on a on a rig, on a uh, ongoing basis, and the scheme is kind of the same, and in, in the but but the object uh, may be a certain type of oil, it might be a a gear oil, it might be a, a transmission fluid, it might be a ins uh, insulating oil or something of that nature, is that that material changes, but the overall scheme and how they handle it, how they get the samples out, where you get the, the results back, how they how the results are analyzed, how they present the, the, the data in a, in a re report and all that can be just minor changes on what's basically a, 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 spec, a certain defined uh, process or scheme. Uh, customer or client is an organization or individual for which a particular uh, proficiency testing scheme is provided through a contractual arrangement. So folks who are familiar with things such as the ASTM or NAPT uh, or uh, collaborative testing service or folks like that, uh, that you basically are, they order the P, the PTs. It's uh, uh, they get the information so they can get the uh, they provide a schedule. They provide dates and times and when things have to be get done by when things that the data has to get in, in in. They put out they give a form out for the folks to put the um, the results on and get back to the pr provider and so forth. So in that process they. Uh, there is an activity where there's a transfer of funds, which basically, uh, just like uh, purchasing anything else, is they now become the customer. And so uh, that's how in proficiency, uh, there are some proficiency testing schemes that are run for the benefit of mankind, but most of them it's, there's some uh, recouper, uh, transfer of funds so that they can sustain their operations. Now, what there was a uh, ISO IEC 17043 per previous version. Uh, so, what what actually changed? Well, uh, one was uh, since the earlier version that uh, there were things uh, ISO IEC 17025 2017 changed. It had some changes, so they they harmonized uh, that uh, in terms of technical requirements and the structure. Uh, there were changes in ISO uh, 13528, that's that statistical document, 
as late as 2022, uh, which came out in, I believe it was end of November of 2022, in terms of terminology. Uh, there were uh, incorporation of some requirements from ISO CASCO. CASCO is a, a large uh, committee, in a sense, uh, for conformity assessment. Um, and as part of the ISO uh, organization, and they had a document that the, they they have their own coding for things, um, and it was a dot, you know, just to to incorporate those requirements, um, and that the uh, they want an inclusion of the requirement that testing activities, calibration activities, PT item production conform to relevant requirements to appropriate ISO conformity assessment standards. And there was a change. They there were three annexes, and they deleted Annex C, and they revised Annex A and B. And we'll just mention what those particular things are later. Structure-wise, uh, they've tried to harmonize. Uh, if you know, if you're familiar with documents such as ISO IEC 17025, 2017, um, uh, ISO 17034. For reference material production, they try they try to have a, an overall a basic uh, structure because um, that goes back to as they watch these uh, different committees and different groups generate them in the past. They sometimes would put one one thing in one section, one thing in the other section, and sometime back uh, they had said, "Well, we're gonna we're gonna kind of get these things into a common uh, structure and." Uh, and so that folks in general uh, uh, can find things easier and so forth. So the first section is the scope. They have, they have what they call normative references. They have terms and definitions. There are some general requirements for impartiality and confidentiality. There's some structural requirements. There are some resource requirements in terms of some general resource requirements, personnel facilities and environmental conditions, externally provided products and services, process requirements. And for those who are familiar with um, uh, 17, ISO IEC 17025 and I, ISO uh, 15189, you've got management system requirements in section eight. We'll talk about uh, the section eight things as well. So Annex A is, is basically de descriptive. It's meant to be informative. It's not. It's not uh, uh, a re set of requirements. It's not man uh, mandatory. It's a. Uh, it's not normative, uh, and it talks about the types of PT schemes. Annex B uh, again gets into talking about st statistical methods for PT schemes. The scope. Yeah, it's, uh, it specifies general requirements for the competency and impartiality of proficiency testing providers. And, um, and consistent operation of all P, uh, proficiency testing schemes. And the document can be used as a basis for specific technical requirements for particular fields of applications. It's kind of said, well, who's, who are the users of PT schemes? Well, it's a, uh, Regulatory, it's the users of PT schemes and regulatory authorities, organizations and, and schemes using peer assessments, accreditation bodies such as PGLA and others can use these requirements in confirming or recognizing the competency of proficiency testing providers. Uh, general requirements is that the uh, in, is it that uh, however they're structured, whatever the organization is, it could be for profit, it could be a nonprofit, it could be part of a governmental body or something like that. It should be structured and managed to safeguard impartiality in terms of commercial, financial, or other pressures. It should be identify threats, including personal and threat to that impartiality, uh, such as ownership, governance, management personnel, shared resources, finances, contracts, marketing and branding and relationships. Uh, they uh, are not necessarily a threat. 
and and if they are recognized as being a potential threat, then they if identified, then they should be eliminated or minimized as not compromised. And that talks about top management uh, of the organization should whatever that is. It could be a large organization such as ASTM with regards to its uh, interlaboratory comparison program. It could be um, uh, an, or, an, an organization, uh, um, for example, in the lead testing area, um, there's some, uh, there is a, a formal plan, uh, pr pr program that is actually mandated and that, that is part of another company and uh, it has to be uh, handled in an appropriate way. Uh, general requirement in terms of confidentiality, the PT is responsible by legally enforceable agreements for the management of all information uh, that we obtain or create in the PT process. The PT provider is to inform the client in advance of any information to be placed in the public domain. Information and made public by client or agreed between PTP and client, all information is considered proprietary and regarded as confidential. Uh, where this arises uh, for people in the environmental field, uh, a lot of the environmental programs require participation in PT on a much higher schedule than normally was that uh, we or uh, a we as PJLA or the other accrediting bodies uh, would require normally, and that those can those have to be. Uh, uh, done by uh, provided by a uh, PT providers that they in a sense recognize and their part of the recognition is that they kind of perform their PTs and can, uh, all along the standards of ISO IEC 17043 but they uh, they, they the PTs are done almost on a um, uh, a much freak, more frequent basis, and they involve uh, a lot of different uh, materials and a lot of different analytes. And that information is actually provided to Perry Johnson Laboratory Accreditation, and so that we can monitor that and so forth. And we have the, and we're held to that by the, those bodies that have those programs and that which we offer those. So that people, the labs themselves, know that. That data is going to eventually get to PGLA uh, and so forth. Uh, similarly, the, there's a uh, again there's one uh, in the in the management of lead uh, uh, in terms of uh, construction and renovation and so forth. Uh, that also uh, uh, that that information can be shared. So that uh, if you're uh, if if the PTP uh, provide if the provider is required by law or authorized or authorized by contractual arrangements to release the information, uh, the client would be notified unless we're we're talking about something that might be basis of an investigation or something, and you're you're prohibited by law. So um. Information about uh, participants or customers from sources other than, for example, could be a complainant or a regulator shall be kept confidential by the provider and shall not be shared with the participant unless agreed to by the source. Uh, PT personnel include contractors, uh, external bodies and shall keep confidential all information obtained. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of activities in PT programs that can be contracted out. But those that 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 they would also have to have uh, legally enforceable agreements that they would maintain confidentiality, and uh, the uh, scheme participants shall be confidential known only to the uh, PT scheme operation unless the participant or customer waive that confidentiality. Uh, for one thing, uh, PT providers need to be legal entities, so to speak. They can be all sorts of things in terms of uh, what their actual structures are. Uh, it could be actually a, what's basically a single individual, uh, if you got down to it. Um, you, uh, uh, a DBA of some sort, or, and also they do define that uh, government entities, because there are government entities that provide PT, uh, that they're, they're considered legal entities. 
Um, we, the PT provider has to uh, identify the responsible management for the activity, and you and, I, and you uh, the PT provider has to identify those particular schemes that they they are going to uh, subject uh, hold the requirements of ISO IEC 17043 to and they can only conform, claim conformity for these schemes. So if they have some, something where they have one or more schemes that are uh, viewed as accredited, and they have other schemes that they operate, but they don't want them accredited, then they have to identify uh, those that specifically identify to that, to the this document. And, uh, any type of uh, activities, uh, since uh, PTs sometimes can be done in the field, they can be done in, we think about laboratories all the time, but there's there's other types of proficiency that can be done uh, in the field that can involve things like truck scales, uh, rail scales, uh, construction related evaluation, inspection of, of uh, uh, manufacturing storage, uh, storage uh, areas or storage things such as petroleum product storage. It could be involved things like uh, cons uh, construction integrity and things of that nature. So uh, th those things are not going to be done in a lab. They're going to be done out in the field. And you have to make sure that the, those activities that take place out in the field uh, do in fact conform as well. They do say that if there, if as there, if there, a lot of PTs involve measurement or tests conducted uh, on the material themselves as they as they're generating it uh, and so forth, and they're testing it themselves, and that testing should be conducted, shall be conducted uh, to meet the requirements of ISO IEC 17025-2017, or for medical situations ISO 15189. Uh, if the material is going to be considered and, and sometimes PT material is in fact a quote reference material, then it should be produced under conditions that meet the requirements of ISO 17034-2016. Now, with just a little note, a lot of those types of things as we go through here, because we'll eventually come down to those things that the PT provider has to produce, has to do themselves, is a lot of these things can be subcontracted out. The, uh, in terms of personnel, is it should have uh, access to a sufficient number of competent personnel. Again, those can be contract, it can contract personnel or contracted for a specific scheme or program. Personnel should have the competence to perform the activities for which they're responsible and evaluate any deviations from uh, what is planned. There should be a process for managing the competence of personnel and it affects all personnel, internal or external, that could influence PT per, or to act impartially. The PT provider should have documented evidence of the competence of personnel that can influence the results of the activities, like education, qualification, training, technical knowledge, skills, and experience. And the pr provider, where appropriate, will authorize people to perform specific activities, including but not limited to planning the PT schemes, assessing data and information to determine stability, homogeneity if applicable, as well as assign values, value uncertainties of the properties or characteristics of the PT items, evaluating the performance actually of the participants, and give opinions and interpretations to the participants, and review and authorize the report. In terms of facilities, um, they should ensure that appropriate facilities uh, should be provided for scheme operations. Now, if this this is inter you know if you re reflect on this, you know a lot of these activities can be subcontracted out, so that they the the actual PT provider uh, might actually operate out of a rented room or something, and everything else is is being contracted out. Well, they're still responsible to make sure that, that the appropriate facilities are, are being employed and, and people are competent to do those particular functions. That could be uh, packaging and distribution of the, of the, the PT items, uh, receipt of the PT items, um, 
and accounting for them and things of that nature. Uh, data entry could be done by someone else uh, and so forth. But it, it, the facilities have to be appropriate for the, for the operation of the scheme. And they have to make sure that environmental conditions don't compromise the PT activities undertaken at sites other than at the, the PT providers facilities or external service providers. They should, they should document the environmental conditions that can influence the validity of PT items, measurements, and tests. Uh, you can imagine there you would have different uh, a different approach to that if you're talking about a PT item being a, an alloy uh, of metal block versus something where you're looking at uh, a milk product. So how, the, how those things are, uh, how those are developed, how they're stored, how they're identified, how they're shipped, all of that uh, is very different depending on and what the uh, environmental conditions that can influence the validity of the, of the PT items and the measurements and tests would vary significantly based on differences such as that. And that you should have uh, access control managed as determined by the PT provider, just in case you're talking about things that could be potentially hazardous, dangerous, things of that nature that might be uh, the items of, of the particular PT program. And an appropriate separation between incompatible activities to prevent contamination and interference and so forth. Now, in terms of externally provided products or services, you've heard me say that you, there's a lot of things that you can uh, subcontract out or buy the, you know, buy the buy the items or something of that nature. But the PT provider can, uh, shall not use external service providers for the design and planning of the PT scheme. They shall not use external service providers for the evaluation of performance. Now, this this that has they can, you could, for example, if it, you had a, a detailed statistical analysis that's necessary to, for, to evaluate the data for a particular scheme, you could subcontract out that actual uh, data entry, the crunching of the numbers, the presenting of the numbers. But at the, at the end, the evaluation of performance itself based on that is, the, is, is something the PTV provider cannot cannot let sub you can't contract that out the same thing is for the authorization of reports there may be people involved in the preparation of reports and the graphics and the this or the that that but the actual authorization of the reports they're responsible in the final analysis for the report uh they so that they cannot duck that so those those are the three things fundamentally that that cannot be uh, use, you can't use an external service provider for it. So, but it doesn't prevent the PT provider from using advisors, assistants uh, from advisors, could use experts, could use a steering group uh, or, or something like that in terms of planning things and so forth. But they, the, those people are providing advice only. You should have uh, procedures to uh, ensure experience and technical competence of external providers of products and services that are, are sufficient for assigned tasks. So they, whatever it is they choose to have external providers, they should have documentation and, and so forth as to what, what was the justification for that. And uh, the part of the, the PT provider shall inform participants and customers in advance and in writing, in other words, it can't just be a phone call of products and services that can or, can or will be provided externally when they affect the validity of the PT activities. Externally provided uh, other things on that, uh, they should have procedures and records for defining, reviewing, and re approving the requirements for such providers of products and services, defining criteria for external providers and evaluating and monitoring their performance, ensuring that the products and services uh, conform to, P to PT, 
P, the PTP, uh, the provide, uh, PT providers requirements and applicable requirements of ISO IEC 17043 before use or directly provided and taking actions arising from the monitoring and evaluating of external providers. So the, uh, the, the PTP uh, itself shall communicate requirements for external providers for the products and services provided, the acceptance criteria, competence, including any required qualification of organizations or personnel, uh, PT activities that the PT provider or its customers intend to perform at the external provider's premises. And uh, the PTP the provider shall be responsible for participants or customers to, for participants or customers for the externally provided products or services. And it says where the customer is a regulatory body that specifies the external providers, um, you have to use those because it's part of a regulation, then they, the, the PT provider is still responsible and could, for taking actions to minimize any undesirable effects that can affect the validity of the PT activities. So they can't uh, just point to the say that the regulatory body uh, defined that and we don't do anything with that. So that's, that's not acceptable. Process requirements. Well, um, the, uh, we're, they're kind of broken down to establishing and co contracting, communica communicating the PT scheme in terms of review of request tenders and contracts and scheme communication. Design and planning of the PT scheme. There's some general things. The, the part of it too, there's some requirements on the statistical design and determining assigned values. Production and distribution is always a fun part of uh, PT providers. Uh, in terms of uh, having the, the items uh, produced, uh, making sure they're, they're, homo they're homogeneous and they're stable, uh, at least for, during the course of the, of the PT round. Uh, how they're handled in storage, uh, packaging, labeling, and distribution of PT items, and the instruction for participants. When they get it back, um, there's, there's aspects that are we check out in terms of data analysis and evaluation of performance. One of the things to keep in mind is that it doesn't necessarily mean statistical analysis. These things could be um, someone's evaluation of a microbial plate or it could be the evaluation of uh, painted panels um, uh, uh, quality and things of that nature that would be, uh, involve uh, uh, being able to uh, uh, you know, observe things. A good example too is like any, uh, maybe PT in the, involving the traditional non-destructive testing uh, things such as dye penetrant and uh, mag particle and uh, things of that nature. Uh, control the control of the scheme in terms of record technical records, control of data and information management, surveillance of the processes, and uh, non what you do with non-conforming work, and then aspects of handling complaints. Uh, I don't think anybody can run a PT program with all the other things that happen to uh, uh, whether you're shipping things to people or mailing things to people or or whatnot, uh, that you're not going to eventually get some complaints, and how you would handle appeals, uh, perhaps, uh, particularly if it's uh, kind of like adverse results, which may have significant consequences to the participant. Now, the Section 8, you know, we talked about these, they have to have ma a management system for the PT pro uh, provider. Uh, we're looking at uh, gen these should all be familiar to people. We have general requirements, uh, management system documentation, control of management system documents, control of records, actions to address risks and opportunities, improvement, internal audits, management reviews, and then, uh, like I said, there's two the two annexes. Uh, they're informative. One describes PT schemes, Annex B. Is uh, again is informative and it's for statistical methods for PT. And I think somebody's going to ask this. Hey, 
you know, I'm a, uh, I've got 1702, I saw IEC 1705 2017 thing, and we get option B. Where's option B? Well, this is, a, this is what is actually in the thing. Uh, section 813 says a PT provider may meet 812 by establishing, implementing, and maintaining a quality management system. For example, in accordance with the requirements of ISO 9001, this management system shall support and demonstrate the consistent fulfillment of the requirements of this document. 814. It says the PT provider management shall provide evidence of commitment to the development and implementation of the management system into continually improving its processes. Well, what sort of evidence would that be? Well, if they're registered or certified to ISO 9001 2015, and they have a, a certificate from an IAF recognized um, body, is that not evidence? So I think they they kind of ducked the rather than calling it you know labeling it so it hits you in the between the eyes is option B. Now there's probably going to be some discussion on this, and uh, I'm just giving you a heads up because it's it was brought up at the APAC meetings uh, uh, that were held recently. So uh, one of the things about that is if they if they don't come out with a definite thing that says, hey, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna accept, uh, obviously we're gonna accept uh, 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 ISO, uh, ISO 9001 cert certifications done by a, uh, an IAF recognized uh, 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 through the IAF process uh, 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 certification body, uh, then I think that's probably we're going to, you know, we probably interpret that as that's definitely going to be sufficient evidence. Now, one of the things in section A12, it says schemes will normally consist of one of the element in each of these areas. So type of expected results, there could be qualitative, which would be nominal or ordinary scales, quantitative, which would be inter, uh, internal or ratio scales, interpretive, uh, using descriptive interpretive data, you know, things like pictures, photographs, things of that nature. Uh, frequency, it could be single or a first occasion. Uh, they could be ongoing, continuous, for example, like much like uh, uh, things offered by some of the PT providers that people are familiar with, like ASTM, NAPT, CTS, et cetera. Um, distribution format, uh, is it sequential from one participant to another? or simultaneous. So simultaneous would be something where you, you, a batch of things are sent out to all, you know, eat, everyone going to a different customer. Sometimes based on the nature of the, um, uh, what's being done, um, sometimes uh, A ships it to B, B ships it to C. So C, C knows that B, B participated, B knows that A participated, and this was brought up uh, in a recent evaluation with regard to uh, one of our PT providers where to minimize the amount of shipping on, on the unit that, because it, you know, you know <laughs> a lot of bad things can happen when you ship things around. Um, they had that type of scheme, but what they had done was, was that they, they did that with the more knowledge of everybody and they and they they waived in a sense the complete anonymity aspect of things, which was accepted by certainly by the evaluator. Uh, what other things? Well, uh, uh, process it could be sample processing or test uh, pre-analytical. You can actually do it for like prep methods. You could have analytical methods and post you know post analytical and others interpretive things. Uh, they have PT studies, I understand, for doctors where they give them uh, various patients uh, their test uh, test results and, and, and they, they then make a diagnosis or they make a, uh, a, 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 a treatment plan and those then are evaluated as, you know, are they consistent, is it appropriate, is it proper and so forth. Uh, method of determination of assigned values is do you use uh, metrologically traceable reference values, in other words, uh, 
you could you could say, well, I'm going to send something to a higher order calibrator, or maybe even send it to NIST, have NIST uh, determine the value, and they are, you know, you say, well, there they are, you know, they are the National Metrology Institute, and we're going to go with that value. Or it could be consensus of a select group of competent participants. It could be we sent these to five different university laboratories, you know, da 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 da. This is what they've come back with. Or you can basically just use the data generated by the participants and say, well, we just look at them in a pile and we throw out those people who are not in the pile. So what they say is that normally a, a PT program will have at least something from each one of those types of analysis. And there's a lot of different uh, uh, designs available. So part of the, the art you might say in, in doing PT accreditation is being able to be flexible. Now, what this is is that they said, well, this this uh, uh, this uh, 17 ISO IEC 17043 uh, was scheduled for publication in 2023, and they said, okay, so what are when will it become, um, uh, you know, uh, when will it be, become? Uh, the, fi the, the final version, so the, the only version, you know, preempting any previous versions. And they said, well, it'll be three years from the date of publication. That was a general assembly uh, vote on that. I lack. Unknown caller. Uh, and it says at the end of transition period, the accreditation of a proficiency testing provider to the 2020 10 version will not be recognized under the ILAC arrangement. So, in addition, as highlighted by the, the, the under the, uh, there is a decision that was made with the ILAC AMC chair. Turn it off. I just put it on mute. Okay. Uh, so, this is the document from Ms. Evans. They uh, were pleased to take the opportunity for the folks who generated the, the document um, and that uh, this has now been published. So it was published at the uh, earlier in the month of May 2026. So they have a, it says, as, as you recall, a resolution was endorsed at the General Assembly held in November 2022 to allow a three year implementation period from the date of publication and they take it to the end of that month. So it came out in early May, so they took it to the 31st of May, 2026 is the, uh, is the date. So um, I'm going to uh, open up, uh, hope, hope that people had questions, you were submitting them. And, uh, and if we have a, uh, if I, I don't get to a question or you think about it later, you can submit it directly to webinar at pjlabs.com. So I'm going to go over and look at questions. Oh, also, just uh, just before we get into the questions, I want to definitely make sure that you save the date. Uh, on Thursday, August 10th, 2023, one, one, one in the afternoon, same here. Uh, look, there's going to be uh, a look at ISO IEC 17025 2017 requirements for corrective action. So uh, that's uh, something to put into your calendar. So let's see if there's any questions. Uh, from what I see, There are no questions were submitted. It's uh, it's blank. So that could be one of two things. One, I've done a really good job of explaining this, or more likely, um, I confused everybody entirely and they just gave up. <laughs> so uh, that said, um, we are about five minutes uh, ahead of the uh, allotted uh, allotted hour. Um, I'd like to, uh, uh, there's a, a person, uh, uh, various people have looked at the slides and, and uh, offered suggestions. I wanna thank them. 
Uh, and also, I'd like to thank uh, Christa, Christian Hugerheide, who uh, helps uh, put on the, and schedule and provide for the wherewithal for these types of, of webinars. And uh, she's uh, uh, listening, I know. So that said, um, I want to thank everyone for giving me time to uh, uh, provide this information to you. I hope it. I hope it met your expectations, and uh, and uh, I want to say thank you. So I'm. I will be signing off. <laughs>